Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is Hardwired Control Unit. In this video, I will be telling you what is the function of the control unit, what are the techniques to generate control signals and then I shall be talking in detail about the hardwired control unit. Let us begin. See, control unit, you have heard the name control unit. But let me tell you once again, whenever we are talking about any system or computer, then majority of the task that is being controlled or done with the help of the central processing unit, CPU. And CPU has two main components. One is the control unit and other is the ALU. ALU is responsible for all the arithmetical and logical operations while control unit that is mainly used to synchronize the task by sending timing and control signals, right? Or you can say the control unit, it actually coordinates the sequence of data movement into, out, off and between a processor's subsystem, subunits. Right. As you can see in this particular fig diagram, there is an input from the instruction register to the control unit and output is the control signal. So control unit, it works by receiving the input information and it converts that into the control signal and that control signal is sent to the central processor. Right. So you can see output the control signal within CPU, the control signals to the control bus. Or along with this, you must also remember that control unit controls the data flow inside the processors and it controls many execution units contained within a CPU. Execution units like ALU, data buffer and registers, you must be aware of it. And control unit also handles multiple tasks like fetching, decoding, executing and storing the result. So when we are talking about the control unit means we must also be aware about the control unit design. And when we are talking about control signals, control signals, it means there must be certain mechanism or the process via which the control signals can be generated. So there are two techniques via which the control signals can be generated. One is the hardwired control and other is the microprogram control. In this video, I'll be telling you in detail about the hardwired control unit. For microprogram, there is another video. So hardwired control unit from its name only you would be able to understand means the kind of control unit which is being designed by using hardware components to generate or to produce control signals, right? That is what the hardwired control unit and hardwired component will be what? Hardwired component may be in the terms of logic gates, flip-flops, decoders, counters, registers, right? The kinds of the digital circuits. So here you can see the sequential logic circuits means hardware components may be a sequential logic circuits or the finite state machines right either sequential logic so here you can see a block but behind this block there is a circuitry which is made from the hardware components so that the control signals can be generated so you can see input is received from the register output is the control signals and along with that there is a status signal and clock i'll be telling you in detail so whenever there is a requirement to design the control unit, designing of control unit and here we are talking about with the help of the hardware components. So there are certain parameters, certain factors which we must take in into the consideration like how many hardware components we are going to use. So depending upon the number of hardware components, cost will vary, the complexity of the circuit will vary, right? So cost of designing. 
what is the cost when you are going to design the control unit that will depend upon the number of hardware components is going to be used so we must try to optimize the number of hardware components so that the cost can be reduced along with that we must also be concerned about the performance of the system means the speed of the operations right so while designing control unit so these are the three factors which needs to be taken into the consideration there are many advantages and limitations or the disadvantages of the hardwired control unit advantages execution is very fast obviously because the hardware components is going to be used so the execution of operation is fast at the same time the number of components which is required that can be optimized and if the number of components can be optimized definitely that is going to gives us the fast mode of operation along with that there are certain limitations because you can see whatever the requirement of the control signals is accordingly this unit is going to be designed means control logic is directly implemented which is totally dependent upon the instruction set right that is what the limitation is if there is a requirement to modify the circuitry that is very difficult because all the wires and everything that is being designed so doing any minor changes or something that needs little bit uh, time or the difficulty must be there there it may be a more occurrence probability of occurrence of error must be more in this particular case because all the hardware components is going to be used there is a relatively complex decoding sequential logic and since so many components is going to be used so it requires more chip area and when more components are there definitely that is going to increase the cost of the control unit also so you must remember the various advantages and disadvantages of hardwired control unit coming to the next this is the detailed block diagram of the hardwired control unit you can see here is the instruction register instruction register contains the instruction which is fetched from the memory you must listen the statements and the terms the instruction which is fetched from the memory it means the instruction which is currently in execution so this instruction register it generate actually op code bit op code bit op code bits respective of the operation and addressing modes of operands which is mentioned into the instruction next is the decoder decoder decodes and interpret so instruction decoder it receives op code bits which is generated from the instruction register which is generated from here and interprets the operation and addressing modes of the instruction right and as you know that decoder this is a circuitry where number of inputs is if n then the number of outputs will be 2 raised to the power n means 2 cross 4 decoder 4 cross 16 decoder so here you can see depending upon the number of inputs there will be the outputs variation so you can see outputs starting from i not i1 up to ik and at a time output will be available only on one line means decoder select which kind of instruction is actually and accordingly that kind of operation will be carried out right so here you can see the control unit but before the control unit there is a clock clock is required which is used to generate the sequence of timing signal sequence of timing signals you can see t1 t2 up to tn with the help of the by using timing generator over here on the right hand side there is a flag so flags may be the conditional flag the status flags and these flags specifies the status of the previous alu operation status whether the operation is full operation is in the process or not and there is a conditional flags also conditional flags means uh, you can understand suppose the execution of instruction depends on some condition or uh, if it is a branch instruction right that means it is determined with the help of the conditional signals conditional signals that always generate the signal 
related to the conditions like greater than, less than, equal to. So such kind of uh, conditions or status that is being represented by the flags. And the output of the control unit, you can see the control signals C0, C1 up to Cm. So a combination of control signals is being generated and depending upon the control signals, it, the function is being carried out. So what you can say in, to, in general, in total, means the control signals are generated depending upon the inputs which is uh, received from the instruction register step counter, flags and external inputs. So that is how the control signal is being generated. I will be explaining you with the help of a table. You can see here I have drawn a table. Uh, you can uh, see there is an instruction oblique timer. Instruction I1, I2, I3, I4. Four instruction is being taken and Timers T1, T2, T3 and T4 is being taken. Suppose first instruction is being fetched from the memory that is available in the instruction register and that uh, instruction is available, instruction is decoded by the decoder, then control unit is converting it and generating the control signals. Suppose in T1 cycle, it generates the control signal C0, C1, C3 for example. In T2 for example, this is C4. C5. In next cycle, C0, C2, C6. In next cycle, let us say C2, C3, C4. So depending upon the combination, similarly you can identify for instruction I2, I3, I4 in respective clock cycles. T1, T2, T3 and T4. You can note it down. Then depending upon the each signal, depending upon based on the table whatever is being written for each signal a boolean equation or you can say a boolean formula is created right so first boolean equation is created and then depending upon that boolean equation hardwired control unit is designed this is what the background for designing the control unit which you can see as a block but actually what is behind that Right. So from this table, you need to create, you need to uh, evaluate the Boolean formula and that Boolean formula is implemented actually. I will be giving you one numerical. This is a question. This question is being asked in the gate examination also. This is very interesting. See, a hardware CPU uses 10 control signals S1 to S0 in various time steps, time steps from T1 to T4, sorry, T5 to implement four instructions I1 to I4, as you can see in this particular diagram. And you have to derive the expression which represents the circuit for generating control signal S5 and S10. So here a table is being listed out in this table, timer, instruction and accordingly that control signal is being mentioned. But now we have to derive the expression. First, we have to derive for signal S5. What is the process? You can see in this particular table, wherever S5 is, you just consider those terms. S5, S5, S5. This is S5. Now, what else? This, this place, anywhere else? No. This is what. Now, as I have told you, depending upon the combination, first you have to write the Boolean expression. So, let us write the Boolean expression for generating control signal S5. Write down all the terms. For this first term, whatever the, what is the term? That is I1, T1. For second term, you are writing I2, T2. Third term, I3, T3. Then fourth term, I4, T1, sorry, I2, T1. This is in the time cycle T1. All the terms are T1. Now, for this term, what you are going to write? I2, T3. I2, T3. And for this particular term, this is nothing but I4, T3. Now, you can take T1 common from these four terms. 1, 2, 3, 4. What you are getting? 
आई वन प्लस आई टू प्लस आई थ्री प्लस आई फोर एंड देन यू कैन टेक टी थ्री कॉमन एंड वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू राइट आई टू प्लस आई फोर नाउ हेयर यू कैन सी आई वन आई टू आई थ्री आई फोर ऑल द इंस्ट्रक्शन दीज फोर इंस्ट्रक्शन इज बींग गिवेन एंड ऑल दीज इंस्ट्रक्शन इज अवेलेबल इट मीन्स दिस इज अ यूनिटी सॉरी आइडेंटिटी आई मस्ट सी मीन्स वेन ऑल दीज टाइटल्स आर प्रेजेंट दिस इज दी आइडेंटिटी आइडेंटिटी मीन्स वन वी कैन राइट दिस पर्टिकुलर टर्म सो वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू राइट एस फाइव इज वॉट वन इन टू टी वन विच इज टी वन प्लस टी थ्री हेयर इट इज आई टू प्लस i4 this is what the boolean expression which is to be implemented when there is a requirement to draw the circuitry right now let us check for s10 let us see where s10 is present 1 2 3 4 5 six and seven now let us write the term for this s10 write down each and every term First is what this term i two into t two i two t two second term is i three t two third term is i four t three next this term is what i one t four then this term is what i three t four and uh, This term is what I two T five and last term is what I four T five. You can just simplify it. What is the S ten you are going to write? First, you are going to take T two common. It means I two plus I three. Next term is I four into T three. Then you can take T four common. and here it would be i1 plus i3 and from the last two terms you can take t5 common so it means t2 plus t4 this is what the boolean expression of s10 right so this is how you can implement you can design the circuit and but before designing that you need to evaluate the logical expression means the boolean expression i hope now this particular question must be clear to you and what is the idea behind how you have to uh, define what do you mean by the hardwired control unit this is a very important question you can do the practice as i have told you that this is being asked in the gate examination thank you so much for watching this video